Hello and welcome back and guess what there's another Thunderbolt now so we've only just got over QNAP and we've talked about Promise and now there is another brand new Thunderbolt NAS coming into the industry from the guys at QSAM. <laughs> So, the QSAM X-Cube XN5004T is the 4-bay version, the QSAM XN5008T is the 8-bay, and another 8-bay, the XN8008T. So, what the hell are they? Well, these are two 4, uh, sorry, a 4-bay and two 8-bays, as you can see on the screen there. Now, first and foremost, before we get any deeper into this, two things. One, Yes, that chassis on there looks exactly like the Promise Atlas S8 that we talked about a little while ago. It seems to be utilizing exactly the same chassis and motherboard inside. Now, right now, I haven't quite found out from the manufacturers I've contacted them to ask if, one, is this just one brand producing hardware that different companies are sticking their label on? Once again, this isn't new. This industry does this quite a lot. But normally with lesser known companies, companies like QSAN and Promise are big enough that they have their own proprietary intellectual property. The idea of them sharing even physical IP is pretty rare. You wouldn't see Drobo and Synology have the same chassis, it just wouldn't happen. And in the case of QSAN, I'm very surprised as well. But between the two of them, they do have some differing specs. Straight away, as you can see, we have four bay and two eight bays. Um, the four bay and the first eight bay, the XN5008 or 4T, both of these arrive with an Intel Celeron CPU, 2.9 gigahertz clock speed, and it's a dual core based CPU. It also arrives with 8 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded up to 32 gig, whereas the bottom one is the more enterprise level unit. This arrives with an Intel i5, and it's a quad core, 2. Um, I believe 7 gigahertz CPU that can be bursted up to 3.3 gigahertz. It should be on the screen. And that is the far more enterprise model. The prices are currently available in the NAS Compare article, which you can see below if you click the link in the description. But what can they do and what can't they do? Well, they both arrive with their own dedicated software on board, QTAN's own software, and it can do everything. It's got virtualization, it's got multimedia playback, it's got multi-user account settings, it's got transcoding encryption and more. It's got everything you need from a modern software platform for a business. None of these are home NASes. Now, and the, the other more astute of you are looking on this side of the screen may have noticed the lack of HDMI, I'm sorry, of lack of Thunderbolt or 40 GBE ports as mentioned in the description. Now, the reason is that this unit is purchased without that bay uh, populated. It arrives with a free, empty PCIe slot on all three of these devices. And what you do is you buy the official QSAN Thunderbolt 3 card or you can get some uh, Intel-based 40 gigabit Ethernet cards. Now, because of that, because of the lack of Thunderbolt connectivity on these, the price is pretty competitive. I believe the 4-bay goes for about 650, 700 quid. Uh, the first 8-bay there costs about 1,000, and the one after that about 1,200 pounds. None of these include VAT or hard drive media. Um, if you connect via Thunderbolt connectivity, you're getting uh, a theoretical 40 gigabits per second. But unless, until we've got our hands on this device as we will very soon, then we won't know the true speeds of it. But the hardware on the rear, if we look at the back, we've got four gigabit LAN ports there, so one gig each. So link aggregation, very much on the table. So you're not just going to rely on that Thunderbolt connectivity. If you've got a link aggregated switch that supports that, you can now have up to 400 or more megabits per second transmission read or write via the connectivity to the device. Um, the device also arrives, all four, uh, all three of these arrive <coughs> with an SSD cache slot in the rear that you can install an SSD card, an SSD um, uh, media, and that lets you imp have improved internal caching there, and that doesn't really work as RAM. RAM, of course, <coughs> is a more short-term solution. Uh, SSD caching creates copies of the existing files on the device that are read and wrote to very frequently, and therefore has them for quick, speedy access. And again, if you're utilizing this device, if you're a photo video editor, maybe you know, you're a wedding photographer, or maybe you edit a film for broadcast and want to distribute it with the NAS settings on this device, but still have the DAS connectivity of 40 GBE or Thunderbolt, this is very much the device for you. Um, and once again, all three of these devices do represent this changing tide of more companies entering into the Thunderbolt NAS arena, because it is incredibly lucrative. The idea of an editor of any kind that needs to deal with big files where they can't rely on network speeds 
when they're dealing with files that are bigger than 40, 50 meg because the network just can't deal with it and files have a tendency to hang. So using directly, directly connecting via 10 GBE, 40 GBE or Thunderbolt uh, to the device gives you the ability to edit those files at great speed while simultaneously be able to distribute them via the network and the internet connectivity of the device. All three of these devices support, once again, AES NI level encryption. They all support multi-user accounts with tiered amounts of credentials and permissions. So you can have lots of uh, users editing and accessing files at the same time, collaborating together, and then distributing those files accordingly. Surveillance is lot it supports the very latest surveillance software, as well as multiple cameras connected to the device. We are waiting to hear more about QSAN surveillance software. On top of that, there is an app center, but things like Plex are not really on the table. This is a far more enterprise-led device, all three of them. The Celeron-based chip at the top there, don't get me wrong, is still a dual-core 2.9, but it's a powerful chip and far more efficient than a lot of the other chips that we've seen of late, even better than that J-series chip too. Um, it's got front-mounted USB one-touch copy button and all the trays themselves, unlike the Promise Atlas SA, a very important difference here, this device is available empty. So whereas the Promise you could only purchase pre-populated with four, six, eight, or even 10 TB drives when it gets released later this year, this device you can purchase empty with your own drives. You can chuck just one drive in and add as you go and have an expand expandable RAID as you see fit. And the great thing is this supports RAID Z because it is a ZFS enabled NAS. There's not a lot of NASs out there that use ZFS as its file system. We see a lot of EXT4, we see some BTRFS from um, Synology, but this is where we see ZFS as a usable file structure. Now, how this compares against the Promise Atlas, I reckon it's going to be very close. Promise have never really had their own NAS platform as software, and once again I will not be surprised if it is just the same device as this with a few tweaks. As we learn more, we are hoping to get this unit um, delivered to us from QSAN to get our hands on it and get to grips with it and find out what the editing speeds are, what it can do and what it can't. But otherwise, do stay tuned to this channel to read more or visit the other channel as well. So subscribe to both, I do recommend it. But if you've enjoyed this, button, uh, click like. Otherwise, if you want to learn more about this device, visit the link in the description or let me know what you want to see in future videos. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.